This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which is a website with well-crafted written courses for software engineers. We also have a free giveaway worth $150 or 11,000 Indian rupees. More on that later. Let's first solve this interview problem on stacks first. The problem that we are going to talk about today is dealing with stacks. Now stacks is something which is a very easy data structure to learn. And in today's video, I'll be sharing how an easy data structure like stacks can make an interview question very interesting and probably difficult for most of us. All right. So to introduce the problem, we are given a stack and we have to design it in such a fashion that we want to do the following operations in order one time. So the first operation that we have to implement is push, which takes an argument and it pushes that particular number to the end of stack. The second function to implement is pop, which deletes and returns the last element or the ending element of stack. The third function to implement is top, which will only read the element at end of stack and get min is another function that we have to implement, which will read the overall minimum of the stack. The thing is we have to do everything in order one time. Now, if you are having an empty stack and let's say you start pushing elements to it, you push 10, then eight, then 12. And then if you do a get min on this, the minimum element return should be eight. And if you do a pop on this, 12 should go away. And if I do a push, it should just add the elements that I am pushing to the end. Now, if I push five, it will look like this. So this is what we have to do. Every operation has to be done in order one time. And the difficult part or the interesting part, I should say, lies in implementing that get minimum function in order one time. And if you are out of ideas, let me explain the solution while you watch the video. Now, storing the overall minimum sounds like a good strategy. But once we pop, we have some n minus one elements in the stack. Now, how do we know in order one time, what is the minimum now? Well, you can do something like this. You might have the overall minima pointing to three, right? Like this. And now let's say if I do a pop, you can say that, okay, the ending element is 12. I don't care. So I can still say the minimum will stay at three, which is correct. But now if I do another pop, well, the minimum is still three because we have still one more occurrence of three. Well, you will say that I can maintain the count of every number. And since my minimum was three and I have two entries of three, removing a three will still keep the minima to three, right? So it looks like the strategy is working. Now, if I do a pop on four, it seems to work because the minimum is still three. But the interesting thing is now, what if this second minima that we were having, this is also getting popped now. If I do a pop again, this will go away. And now the minimum is five. Now out of these four elements, we can see that this is five, but in real time, how would our code know in order one time that what is the next minimum? Similarly, if I pop a five, the next minimum is eight and we have to handle this in order one time. So to do this, I'll give you an, uh, a very cool idea. What we can do is we can duplicate. I mean, we can have another stack, which will look something like this. Now, as you can see, the yellow stack is something which we have introduced and it is having all the numbers in descending order. And what I am doing is whenever you insert numbers in the stack, uh, we insert the overall new minimum in our second stack. Now to explain you how the second stack is built, let me walk you through it. Now, when we inserted first number 10, uh, we simply insert a 10 in our second stack. Now, when you are inserting an eight, I see that it is a new minima for my stack. So I push eight instead of 10. Now uh, I push 17 to my original stack, but the minimum does not change. It will still stay to eight. And therefore I still continue pushing eight to my second stack. Now, when I push five to my first stack, I can see that this is a new minima, which I have found. So therefore I push five to my second stack as well. If you can see the idea at every point of time, we are pushing the new minima in our second stack. And this will be super helpful to us as we will see. 
Now when we push 3 to the first stack, it again decreases the minima and therefore we push 3 to our second stack as well. Now when pushing 4 in first stack does not really change the minima, so we still continue to push 3 in our second stack and this is where we build the entire second stack as you can see. Now the interesting thing is, let's say you pop first 3 elements, so these first 3 elements will also be removed from the second stack and now you can see that the top element of our second stack is always showing the global minima of our first stack. So this is 3, right? Now if you pop this, you can see that the top of the second stack is saying 5, which is the minima row. And if you remove 5 as well, you can see now beautifully the second stack is telling us in order one time what is the cur current minimum number in the original stack. And by using this trade-off of space and time, we actually used more space, but we were, ab we were able to solve the entire problem in order one time, and which is beautiful. Now to give you a walk through this, I am using the language C++ and this is available on GitHub as well. You can check the video description for that. But before we do that, I really want you to tell that if you are liking this content and if you are preparing for coding reviews, make sure to subscribe. As you can see, a lot of you guys do watch the video, but you're not subscribing. So do that, please. Now moving on, uh, we have a class min stack. As we were saying that we were implementing four functions. Now we will start doing that. Now, the, as you can see, the constructor is initializing the two lists or two vectors, which is nothing but two arrays, two empty initially on constructing the min stack object. Now, the first function that we are implementing is push, which takes an argument as an integer x. What it does is it pushes that integer to a, and now we also have to push something to b, remember? Now, it's quite easy. This is what we are handling. This block of code is handling the insertion for our second stack and I'm using a vector or an array to implement that. So what we are doing is if the uh, second stack or the second list is empty, we simply push back the integer x to the end because the stack was empty. This is the first minima that we will have. Otherwise, what I do is I know that this is always in descending order. So I'm checking the last element that r begin, which you are seeing is giving me the last element of our second list. And what I do is I compare that with the new number x that I'm inserting and I take the minimum of both, which is the new minima and I push that to my second list, which is b in this case. So that's pretty much that I'm doing over here. And in this way, the order one push up implementation has been completed. Now coming to the pop function, it's quite easy. You simply remove the a and b, you just simply call pop back and the ending elements will be deleted. Then we have a top function which will return the last element and it's quite straightforward. As you can see, this R begin uh, in C++, it's giving me the last number and that's what I'm returning back. So this is also order one time. As you can see, all the operations we have implemented so far are order one time. We are not doing any for loops. We are not doing any shuffling. And again, for get minimum, which was something bit tricky before, like it was order n initially, but now with our second stack approach, we used extra space. And now that extra space is giving us the answer to the get minimum function in order one time, because we know that the last element in our list B is actually the current minimum for our entire stack. So that's pretty much about it. The entire implementation, if you want to refer, you can find it on GitHub. I will put the video links in description. Please uh, have a look over there. Now, if you want to talk about the summary, I would say that this might look easy to solve, but we are not always that lucky uh, that our mind cracks such problems in a real interview situation. So I will always recommend to be better prepared and solve different kinds of problems in your limited time of interview preparation. As you can see from my previous videos as well, I am keeping the content animated, clean, and also include the code walkthrough. Well, the primary intent of this playlist that I'm making is to capture a variety of famous interview problems that you should rush through uh, while you are preparing for coding interviews. I do hope this playlist helps you a lot and you can find the link of playlist in video description. So if you guys are preparing for interviews or enthusiastic about problem solving, do subscribe and like this video. Let me know in comments what you think about this one and I hope you enjoy the free giveaway. So educative.io is having this plan in which you can subscribe to whole 140 courses that they have on their website. 
uh, annually or monthly. So you pay monthly or annually, but you get access to all the courses. You don't have to buy each and every course again. Okay. Now, if you are from India, there is further great news because they have 40% off campaign running for Indian users. But on top of that, irrespective of wherever you are, you also get an extra discount if you go to this website educative.io slash Rachat and uh, this is only valid for the first 90 users and also coming to the free giveaway uh, the, the steps to participate in the free one year membership uh, are listed below. So you have to comment below interested followed by your Instagram ID and make sure to follow me on Instagram so that basically I want that I should be able to message you if you are selected as the random winner. And this will be running for three weeks. So make sure to comment as soon as possible. Also, if you want to connect me on social media, Instagram and Twitter handle is same Rachit IITR. I'll see you in the next one, guys. I'm going back to make more fun, animated, simple and clean videos for you. So I'll see you in the next one. Till then, happy coding. Bye bye and take care.